Fill out your tourney brackets now in the Fox Sports Radio Bracket Challenge. Visit foxsportsradio.com now to register. Fill out your bracket and get the rules. You get to compete against myself, Rob Parker, Martin Weiss, VJ Husky, and all of our Fox Sports Radio hosts and fellow listeners as well to see who has the best bracket. The winning bracket wins the ultimate college sports trip for you and a friend with a $2,000 graduate hotel gift card a $1,500 travel credit, and a basketball swag bag. You can't beat that gift. The FoxSportsRadio.com Bracket Challenge is now live, and it is presented by Graduate Hotels, where college fans stay, and by Tractor Supply. What a dunk! That's the first thing I want to say. What a dunk! Anthony Edwards, arguably the most exciting player in the NBA Who's who's battling him for that? Ja Morant, but Ja's not playing this year. He's injured. So I don't know who would be more exciting of a player, exciting, than Anthony Edwards. Last night, Martin, uh, in a game with Utah, he had 32 points, eight dimes, seven boards to lead Minnesota to a victory over the Jazz. Remember, they are playing Minnesota without not only Carl Anthony Towns, their second best player and a multiple time All Star, mm-hmm. but also without Rudy Gobert, who may be on the verge of winning his fourth straight def- or not fourth straight, but fourth Defensive Player of the Year award. That would tie Ben Wallace and Dikembe Mutombo for the most all time. So they needed a win without their big guns or two of their three big guns. And Anthony Edwards delivered. And what everyone's talking about is this dunk he had over John Collins. And I, I'm telling you, Martin, every time Edwards goes up for a dunk or a block, he's got the block of the year, maybe the dunk of the year. It, I, it really, I'm not even like, I don't feel like I'm exaggerating. Obviously, it, it's not true. But it looks like he's jumping off a trampoline. <laughs> He is so explosive to the hoop. It's just crazy. What'd you think of that dunk? And and am I tripping? No, you're absolutely not tripping. But first of all, I do have to take a minute and chastise one of the dunkers of our of my generation at least, Blake Griffin. Because before Blake Griffin, people were grabbing the rim. Now, with Blake after Blake Griffin kind of took the dunk contest by storm, Lob City and all of that, we got a whole bunch of guys who are throwing it down quite literally as opposed to dunking and then hanging on the rim. I'm convinced that Anthony Edwards ended up uh, dislocating that finger because he didn't grab the rim and well, hang up hit, there for I a think second. He hit he hit John Collins' head. That's what I was, if he That's had grabbed on the rim. The finger. If he had grabbed on the rim, he, he wouldn't have hit his head. Out. He was too far. I I think it is I, I feel like, and Dwight Howard did this in the dunk contest. Remember, he had the Superman cape on. Mm-hmm. And like you said, Blake Griffin did it over Timothy Mozgov and K- Kendrick Perkins, which I think was his best dunk. I, I got to be honest, Martin. I think a lot of times just throwing it in is more impressive because you know how high you have to get up to throw the ball down into the rim without it bouncing off the back of the rim or something like that. Man, I, I loved the dunk last night. No. So you had an issue because he didn't grab the rim? I didn't have an issue, no. I'm just being – it's just it's just a point of clarification that we have now, to me, at least lowered the standard of what the dunk is at this point so in this time. So this is lower? No, because like look – Like I said, I because think when I was a kid, Chris, difficult. When I was a kid – you, Nobody did it. You were That's dunking on was. somebody, hanging on the rim, putting your chestnuts in somebody's face, and saying, "Ah, deal with me now!" Right? Well, people, you people still do that, but when you leave from so far out and you can't get to the rim, if you're high enough to throw it in, I, I'm impressed. No, I'm impressed. So I you will sound say, like the old man. Get off my lawn now, not me. But uh, you know, I'm sorry. I'm sitting in Rob Parker's chair, so I guess it just rubbed off. <laughs> but no, I'll say this about Anthony Edwards and that dunk. First of all, I fully agree with you. He's one of the best tickets you can buy in the NBA right now in yeah. terms of putting on a show. To me, he and he's really consistent night in, night out. Now, may, he may come late to the game, or you know, out of the locker right. room, he Get might miss. There. Get him there. He <laughs> might miss the second, uh, the second half tip, but. Uh, uh, but no, in terms of just pure athleticism, 
pure, uh, uh, just, and uh, I kind of really like to see the adversity that he's going through right now as a player without, like you said, his other all star, Carl Anthony Towns, and Rudy Gobert, who is playing at a defensive player of the year level right now. To watch him put the team on his back, to me, has been really special. And I know last offseason, we see this all the time when guys go play for Team USA, right, and then come back and they uh, their game is elevated to a different level. I think that's what happened with Anthony Edwards this last year. He played really well over the summer playing with Team USA. And then after he came back to the NBA, you see his game has risen, risen to another level. And I am hoping that they do make some noise in the playoffs because I agree with you wholeheartedly. And this is the best ticket you can buy in the NBA to go watch a show. Or I should say this, the best young ticket you can buy in the NBA to go watch a show, right? Because don't get me wrong, Steph Curry's still doing his thing. LeBron's still doing his but thing. This but guy this guy is a high flyer. Exactly. Yeah, and, and, he, and, you can see he's at the beginning of something great, being only well, 22 years old. And, I, I mean, I love his game. I love the way he plays. And, and it's just evident that he's going to go try this. Like, just a few days ago or a few weeks ago at this point, he tried to catch Anthony Davis. You're coming over Anthony Davis, the top of Anthony he, he Davis. He's going after everybody. Exactly. And, and, and it's reminiscent of a guy that used to dunk on everybody, Dikembe Mutombo. Got him, Alonzo Mourning. Got him, Patrick Ewing. Got him, Shaq. Got him. And, of course, that would be none other than Michael Jordan. And Anthony Edwards, Martin, is drawing comparisons to Michael Jordan. Patrick Beverly has said it. Other people have said it. And I reached out to the GOAT himself, yes, MJ, today via text. And he told me he does indeed see the similarities in his game and Anthony Edwards' game. And I think the similarities are these, Martin. Now, let me say this first. There's two kind of people that get compared to Michael Jordan. There's those that people think could maybe be the GOAT. And that's LeBron, right? Sure. LeBron, his game is nothing like Michael Jordan's, but he was compared to Mike because can he be better? Can he be as good? Anthony Edwards is the other type where stylistically they get compared to Michael Jordan. I don't think anybody as great as we think my Anthony Edwards' future could be, none of us are thinking he's going to be the GOAT or even in that conversation. Oh, maybe a surprise us, but right now nobody's thinking that. And here's the stylistic similarities I see. One, obviously, the high-flying elements of his game, dunking on people, aggressive. Two, he loves to play defense, Martin. Mm -hmm. We saw that with Team USA. We've seen that this year where the Timberwolves are a top-two defensive team in the league. Yes, you have Gobert, but you also have Anthony Edwards getting after it on the perimeter. Three, he loves to play. He ain't trying to load manage. I remember talking to Michael Jordan a few years ago, and we were talking about the possibility of them lowering the, you know, 82 games, making it smaller. He could not understand. It was almost like he was offended. How in the world could players want to get the 82 games lessened? Like, he's like, man, I want to play every night. And you can see that by his record. He played almost every night right. when he wasn't hurt. And Anthony Edwards is like that. And, Martin, we saw that last night. He dislocates his fingers, you said, goes into the locker room, gets it popped back into the place, and then taped and goes back out to the game to play. A lot of guys in this day and age would have been like, man, I'm good. You know, we'll get him another day. I'm chilling. And he went out there to play, and he said, I don't want to load manage. So all those are ways that – and he's charismatic and all that too. But those are some similarities I do see – with him and Michael Jordan. And look, Victor Wimbanyama is going to be the face of the NBA. We, I, I think that's clear. But outside of him, there are going to be other faces, and I think one of them will be Anthony Edwards. What do you think of the MJ comparison? I don't. Ha I like it, actually. I, you, it's something that, you know, it's like you said, it's blasphemous in a way to, comp, to really comp somebody to Michael Jordan or Tom Brady or something like that because it's like, all right, dude, Wait a second. You can't do it quite yet. You got to see some wins. You got to see some rings, so on and so forth. But if you're just talking about style and play style and athletic ability, I, he's right up there with Kawhi in my mind in terms of guys who remind me of Michael Jordan when they play. Like, he, well, Kawhi. Because for different reasons. Sure. But yeah, it's like. Kawhi but, with the mid 
range. All but that. but I mean, I love his competitiveness. And while you say Victor Wembanyama is going to be the face of the NBA, uh, I, I I get where you're coming from with that. But I do wonder if we've seen a lot of uh, uh, foreign-born players kind of take that mantle from here and there, like Jokic or Giannis, or to be as as the best player in the league or the, you know the face of the league or so on. It makes me wonder about American-born players and where they are. I think Anthony Edwards is our best shot at that one as, as an American player. But in terms of just his ability and his, his competitiveness, to me, he is breathing life into a league that, you know, is still, from the media side of things, still really focused on the main uh, the main players of the past with Steph and LeBron, Kevin Durant, so forth and so on. To me, Anthony Edwards is a type of guy who can break through that conversation because – Again, when you go watch him play, he's attempting, not necessarily completing, but attempting something like this almost every right. night. Right. And right. what I don't appreciate is there's two dunks going on in this segment. Anthony Edwards dunking over John Collins, and you dunking on me talking about how you're texting Michael Jordan. <laughs> well, it's something for you to shoot for to and aspire to, young man. <laughs> what do you think of the Anthony Edwards and Michael Jordan comparisons? Your thoughts? Let's go to Alex in Scottsdale. You're on The Odd Couple on Fox Sports Radio. Boys, how we doing? doing we are great, well. man. What's how are on? you? Yeah, I'm still recovering from the waste management uh, out here, but I'm doing good. That was weeks ago. Lee, jeez <laughs> Louise. Yeah, I'm old. I'm 37. I got three kids. I, I can't drink like I used to. I need <laughs> days to recover, months to recover. <laughs> wow. All hey, right. So, well, let me start with this. Why every time someone has a good game or a good season, we want to compare them to the, to the best player that's ever lived in any sport? I, I don't understand the comparison because Anthony Edwards is a great player, but you're talking about Michael Jordan. Okay, The closest person to Michael Jordan was Kobe Bryant. And as a Suns fan, I hate Kobe Bryant. But that is the only guy, in my opinion, that you could sit there and compare to him. Um, you know, he well, I, don't, I, mean, he I think you defense, you're but. right. If people were saying he he's going to be as good as Michael Jordan, I don't think anybody's saying that. I think what they're saying is the way he plays, the excitement he brings. That's what's similar. Yeah, it's not a goat conversation. It's yeah, more just yeah. a what is he doing on the court day in day right. out. That's it. Right. And and we're we're looking for an exciting. I mean, think about all the best players: Giannis, Jokic, Steph. LeBron, Durant, Jason Tatum, uh, uh, Embiid, Luka, none of them play like Michael Jordan except yeah. Anthony Edwards, right? And so I think there's some of that too. Let's go to Kevin in Culver City. You're on the Odd Couple Fox Sports Radio. God is good. What's up, fellas? All the time, bro. All the time. I I'm so happy I finally had some validation from the great Christian Sard. I was in an NBA front office for about eight years scouting players. And as a scout, you just want to go by what your eyes tell you. I'm in a prominent fantasy league with one of my boys, Evan Davis. He's a big designer in New Jersey. You might know him. And I said, Anthony Edwards reminds me of Michael Jordan. He said, you're crazy. What? I said, <laughs> Michael Jordan. I picked him up off the waiver wire as a rookie because I saw a superstar. Now, if you look at what he does, the way he shoots the ball, the way he's athletic in midair, the way he dunks, it's Michael yeah. Jordan S, the way he controls the ball with his, with his athleticism, his handle, his intensity, the way he plays. He gets 44 points right when Towns goes out. This guy's got superstar win all over him. He's got the work ethic. He loves the game. He competes. You've got to look at the compete when you scout a player. If he goes on this trajectory the way he's going now, he can be one of the greatest. And I think he enjoys the game just like a Michael Jordan. He likes playing basketball. This team is on the rise. And Anthony Edwards, he's a two-way player, too. The people yep. forget that he can play mm -hmm. defense, too. So, Chris, you are right on with that. It's not uh, crazy to think it. And if you look at the league and our faces, he can be the face of the NBA, even more of a victor, because I think he's got that Jordan bravado to him that – you know, half man, half, uh, you know, not human. Just, he just, he has that aura to him, the way he, he carries himself when he gets on the court. So I, I think with, with faces of the league, they're usually smaller players. They're not big men, Magic Johnson, Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James. And I think this guy has all of the tools to be that. Um, he's a, a phenomenal player and definitely a superstar in this league. 
There you go. There you go. Jimmy in South Carolina, you're on the odd couple. You know, all I want to know is why there's no comparisons to Dominique Wilkins, the way he flies. That's what I don't understand. I mean, I don't, I get the whole Michael Jordan thing yeah. and all that, but I mean, he's high flying and Dominique was doing that. And can you maybe, you know, get into that well, a little bit? And- <laughs> yeah, that's, that's fair. I actually think his style is kind of right in between, as far as dunking, Martin, sure. is right in between Jordan and Neek. He's not quite as graceful as Jordan. Because Jordan, you know, he'd be moving his legs and, you know, swinging the ball. like Sticking his he tongue out. He was just out. graceful. Yeah, <laughs> like, the, the movements of his body, kind of like a Sean Kemp. You know, Sean Kemp just had these unorthodox movements that made it look better. But he has more, I would say, more power than Jordan when he dunks. And that's where he's kind of right in between Neek and Jordan. Neek was more of a power dunker. Jordan was more graceful. And I think he's kind of right in between those two, Martin. Uh, yeah, I 100% agree because when you think, especially because you think of Jordan also too, you think of some of his finishes at the rim, right? The switching hands and all that yep. other stuff just in the air. Where you think of Dominique, he was hunting for souls. He was trying to send <laughs> you to the ground. And that's what Anthony Edwards is trying to do out here. Like, don't get me wrong. Can, does he have the ability and the body control to do some of that other stuff? Sure. But right now, at 21, 22 years old, whoever right. old he is, he's hunting souls. He's trying I to like send you that. down down to the shadow realm, and that's where John Collins went. <laughs> Hunting for souls. I like that. I might steal that, man. I well, might steal you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, bro. Know. Have you? Did you steal it from somebody? No, nah, I just came up with that. Okay, you know, I honestly, was looking at you, and a guy said, God is good, that made me think about it. <laughs> that's what kind of <laughs> triggered it in my brain. <laughs> 